When we first introduced chemical reactions, we talked about different signs of a chemical reaction. And one of them was temperature change. So in some reactions, there's an increase or a decrease in temperature. If there's an increase in temperature, it means that energy is released. And if there's a decrease in temperature, it actually means that energy is absorbed by the reaction. So, endo and exothermic are those types of reactions that relate to a change in temperature. So that's where we have this thermic here. So, endothermic are the type of reactions where energy is absorbed. Energy is absorbed and it gets absorbed in the um, chemical bonds that get formed. Energy is absorbed there's a de decrease in temperature. Classic example of that is photosynthesis. So, energy from the sun is converted into glucose. So, it's just simply CO2 plus H2O with energy from the sun, I might just call it sunlight, gives us C6H12O6 plus what else do plants give us? Oxygen. Okay. Now that's not balanced. To balance that I need to go 6, 6, 6. Okay, I should give myself more room. But that's a type of reaction where energy, think about energy from the sun, is being absorbed and it gets locked into chemical bonds to form the glucose. Um, so our exothermic so think about exit, so energy is exiting, energy is released, okay, and the temperature increases. And this is our classic combustion reaction, or in this case here, it's um, aerobic respiration. So inside our little mitochondria, we take glucose in the presence of oxygen and we break it apart and we release energy, and that energy is used to keep us warm and to allow us to do our normal Mrs. Green functions. So that's one example. And the other one we did was the methane, CH4 plus O2 gives us H2O plus CO2. Now we can go ahead and balance that one as well, but this is burning methane. So burning a fossil fuel, of course it releases energy in the form of heat, doesn't it? Okay. <laughs> Get a little bit nervous when I have to do this in front of you, but I think that's right. Hopefully, I'm sure you'll tell me if it's not. Endothermic reactions, energy enters. Exothermic, energy is released. Question for you. Design an experiment to be able to tell whether a reaction is exothermic or endothermic or neither. What would you do? It's not hard, don't overthink it. What would you do? Pause and have a think. It's actually quite simple. All you need is one of these things. Can you see what that is? Probably not. That is a thermometer. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to measure the temperature before the reaction. So measure the temperature of the reactants and then you're going to put them together and you're going to measure the temperature of the product. That's it. If there's a change, if the temperature increases, means it's an exothermic reaction. If the temperature decreases, it's an endothermic reaction. If there's no change, it's neither exo or endothermic. So it's pretty simple. Another way, because endothermic reactions are harder to understand. Here's a way to think about it. Have you ever had one of those chemical ice packs? So straight out of the uh, first aid kit, not the freezer, just the first aid kit. There's just two chemicals in there, and you just have to mash it up or shake it or break something inside and give it a wriggle, and it gets cold. It gets very, very cold because it's an endothermic reaction. It gets cold because it's actually taking heat from outside and storing it inside the chemical bonds. So it feels cold on the outside. 